So Redis observability has been a top request from you guys. And for those of you who don't know, Redis is a popular in-memory key value store that's often used for application caching. So as of today, Pixie traces Redis requests that are made to in-cluster Redis instances, as well as Redis instances outside of your cluster. So like the rest of the protocols that Pixie traces here on this slide, you don't need to add any instrumentation to get Redis visibility. If your cluster has Redis requests passing through it, Pixie will automatically trace them for you. And Pixie provides deep introspection. So for Redis, we're able to see not only who is talking to who, but the contents of those requests. So the Redis commands and command arguments and the full response. This information is pushed to a new Redis table and you can use pixel queries to access this data with the live UI, CLI, or the new API that we discussed in last week or last month's meeting. So now I'll show you some of the scripts that we provide for out of the box Redis observability. So I've got the live UI open here and I've got my cluster selected in the top left. I'm going to go to the script drop down menu and type Redis. And we've got three scripts you can look at. And today we're going to start with the flow graph. So I'm going to click that script. And this script has a required argument for namespace. So I'll type that in and rerun it. And here you can see a graph of all of the traffic using the Redis protocol within our cluster. And it also shows latency and throughput information. So if, you, if you've used our DNS flow graph, that's a really popular script we have. This is very similar to that, but it's for the Redis protocol. So this cluster has on it a modified version of Google Cloud Platform's microservices demo. And this is like a web app that users can browse products, add them to their cart, and purchase those products. And this microservices app, as the name implies, has a bunch of microservices, and it has a cart service and the cart service is responsible for managing a user's shopping cart on this website. And the cart service uses a Redis database to cache the user's cart. And to allow for a larger data set, we've partitioned this Redis to have three shards. So jumping back over to the live UI, here we can see our cart service. To untangle this graph a little bit. And the cart service is talking to three Redis instances. And each of those Redis leader instances has a um, follower instance, which is a replica. And in this graph, the color of the arrows between the pods represents the latency. And if you hover over the, latent, uh, the arrow, you can see more detailed latency and throughput information. And so for example, here you can see that our um, Redis follower pods, which are the replicas, their communication to their leader pods or to their leader Redis instances is much slower than the communication between the um, leader Redis instances and the cart service. We can also see information based on the weight or the thickness of these arrows. So in this example, we can see that Redis cart zero is getting much higher traffic, much more traffic than cart two or cart one based on the thickness of the um, arrow here. So the table below the graph shows the same data that powers the graph. Whoops. Ah, sorry. Um, so if we scroll down here, we can sort by the request throughput column by clicking on that um, column name. And we can confirm that Redis cart zero is seeing about 10x the throughput of the other primary, uh, the other leader Redis instances, so our Redis shards. So Generally, it's best if you can set up your application and database so that your traffic is evenly distributed between your Redis partitions. Remember that the Redis database in, this, uh, in our example here is caching user carts. So overwhelming a single Redis instance could lead to a poor user experience for the customers whose carts are stored there. So let's investigate this imbalance of traffic between our three Redis partitions by taking a look at the Redis pod with this highest traffic, and that's Redis cart zero. So for this example, we'll assume we've already checked our Redis configuration and it has adequate resources. And we're primarily just investigating the load on this one Redis instance. So we'll look at some actual Redis requests. To do that, we're gonna look at the Redis data script. So up at the top in the script argument, I'll type Redis data. And this script shows all of the Redis requests traced in your cluster. 
So if I expand one of the rows, we can see all the data from that row in its JSON representation. And the most important columns here are the Redis request command, which in this case is get, the arguments that are passed with that command, which is a key, and in our case, that's the user ID, and the response. So, <laughs> um, okay, so let me close that. So my goal here is to see a breakdown of the Redis commands being sent to our highest traffic Redis pod. So I'm gonna open the editor using control or command E, depending on your operating system. And I'm gonna um, copy in a script I've already written over here. And then we'll run it and see what it does. So this script on line 15 is loading the last five minutes of data from the Redis data.beta table into a data frame. And if you're writing scripts with this Redis events table, just note that eventually we're gonna change the name to Redis events. So just be aware of that. On line 18, we're using the context function and the context function provides extra Kubernetes metadata based on the existing information in your data frame. In this case, the Redis events table has a UPID column and we're using that information to infer the pod name. Now, the, the pod name in this Redis request data represents the pod being sent the Redis request. So we wanna filter only requests going to that high throughput Redis instance. So note that, um, we, that pod names in uh, Pixie are prepended with their namespace. So just be aware of that. And then because I wanna see an overview of what's happening, what's, what requests are being sent to this pod to see if we can figure out why it's getting so many requests, I'm gonna group the Redis requests by pod, which the request is being sent to, and the Redis command being sent in that um, request. And then I'm gonna count the number of requests with this unique pod command pair. So I'm gonna run this using um, control enter or command enter. And here you can see in the last five minutes, which is specified in the top right here, for pod Redis cart zero, which is our high traffic pod, we have been sending it these five Redis requests. And if we sort by count, we can see that like the large majority of these Redis requests to this pod are hget. hget is the Redis hash get command to get an item from a hash table. So let's drill down and look at only these hget requests to this pod and see which keys are being requested by this hget command. So we can use the same script for that and we just need to modify it a little bit. So first we're gonna filter based on the Redis command for hget. Then we're gonna grab the key which represents our user ID from the command arguments column using the pxpluck command which it grabs from a JSON object. And then finally, um, in addition to grouping by pod and command, we're also gonna add key in here. And then we're gonna count the number of times that key was requested in all of the Redis requests in the last five minutes. So we'll run that using command or control enter again. And here, um, here we can see immediately that we have a hot key. So one of our user IDs and their shopping cart is being accessed at a much higher rate than the rest of the keys on this instance, Redis instance for our five minute time window. So because the, um, these keys represent user IDs and the values are the user's shopping cart, in this example, we're retrieving the cart of a single user much, much more frequently than the other users on the site. So with just a few lines of code, we've been able to get insight into how the keys in our Redis database are being accessed. And we can use that information to determine how to best configure our Redis database and partition the, cl the cluster so that um, we're providing the best user experience to that customer assuming they're not a like malicious bot. So to wrap things up, Pixie's Redis tracing requires no instrumentation. It's, it traces not only who's talking to who or who's sending who Redis requests, but also the contents of those requests down to the full Redis request command, the command arguments and the response. And you can access this data using the live UI as we've done here, our CLI or our new API. So finally, I want to thank Yaosheng who actually built this feature. And I want to note that this is a very early feature preview. So please, please, please reach out if you run into any issues either on GitHub or Slack and um, let us know how it goes for you.